This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is the Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the list building lifestyle. There's three types of people that will ever hit your sales funnels. The first type is the ones you've had at Hello. They will buy anything you're selling and they will do it fast. The other type are the people that immediately recognize that what you're selling is not a good fit for them either ever or right now. So they will politely say no thanks or maybe send you an angry letter and they will not buy from you. But then there's everyone in between and those are about 90% of the people that hit your funnels. And the reason they're not buying is plain and simple procrastination. And the only way to deal with it is by using the good old fashioned scarcity. That is why I'm excited to bring you today's guest. His name is Jack Bourne. He created software that revolutionized the internet marketing industry and he continues to do so every single day. Jack has created AW Pro Tools, a software that puts AWeber on steroids, and although he doesn't own that anymore, he continues to improve our life as marketers. And today, he mostly busy with his child, DeadlineFunnel.com. It's a software that allows you to inject real scarcity into almost any offer, even if you don't control it. Yes, even if you're an affiliate marketer, you can inject real scarcity into the offers you're promoting and make more money. Sometimes you can double your conversions if you do it right. And that is exactly what we're going to be chatting about today. We're going to be disclosing how can you, as an affiliate, inject real scarcity into your offers and as a result, double your conversions. So without further ado, please help me welcome Jack Bourne. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to be here. So, you know, without further ado, I'd just like to go ahead and get started. And the question that's on my mind, the question that I've been wondering for years now is, why do people rely so much on bullshit scarcity? How come it's so attractive? Yeah, that's a great question. So the the reason why, in my opinion, the reason why people rely on bullshit scarcity is because first and foremost, it's been proven again and again and again that urgency and scarcity works. It's one of the most powerful psychological triggers. It works across different languages all over the world. There's really, I, I can't think of any situation where if you do it correctly, that scarcity and urgency will not increase your sales. So the reason why they're using it at all is because they know on some level that it works. But why are they using fake scarcity? Because people who use uh, fake scarcity or fake urgency are taking a very short term view of their business. They're not looking two or three steps down the road. They're just thinking about the transaction today. And what I truly believe is that the, the, the days of being able to just sell one product and, and just have one transaction and have that be a full-fledged business are gone. And certainly, even if, even if someone out there says, well, I'm making it work, you really should be looking down the road and thinking, thinking about product number two and product number three and developing trust and authority with your audience. Because one of the most effective ways for you to grow your business is to have a relationship with people who have bought from you in the past. So if you understand that and you have that long-term view and you and you take your business seriously, then using fake scarcity is is really just going to poison that well. Uh, you don't want to be, for, for lots of reasons, you don't want to be lying to people. But even if you put the moral issues aside and you just think about your business and your growth and, and you just think of it from what's going to best serve you and your business, you really want to be as, you want to sell and market with integrity because it's that integrity that's going to help drive that second, third, fourth, fifth transaction because they have a relationship with you because they know that if you say, hey, the deal ends today, that it truly does end today. So I, th I think people who use fake scarcity are are savvy enough to see that urgency works, but they're not savvy enough to see that they should be treating their, bi their business seriously and treating people with respect and dealing with them honestly. Or I also should should 
put an asterisk on this and say, or they see the power of urgency and scarcity, but they just don't know how to be able to implement this in a way that is authentic. Because a lot of people, some people I've seen will put a countdown timer on their on their sales page. And we've all seen this where you, you forget to buy something and then you come back the next day, the tab is still open and the countdown rolls back to, you know, it resets, um, even though the page says, hey, this deal ends tonight. So people try to do it in an evergreen fashion because they also are savvy enough to understand the power of marketing automation. But again, they, they, they either don't know how to do authentic evergreen urgency. They don't know that there are options out there like our software, or they know and they're just being too cheap or they, they, don't, they, they don't see their business as an asset the way that they should if they're taking a long-term view. That's my, that's my viewpoint on why people use fake scarcity. You know, personally, I think they're just lazy. I mean, to go out there and to figure out how to install these timers and how to use the scarcity properly, is it's a difficult task. You've got to really think this through. And you have to deal with lots and lots of technology. A challenge, which I believe you kind of stumbled into before you create a deadline funnel. When you were working for Perry and you had to develop this, you know, robust uh, timer, right, that would fit into your system, that wasn't an easy task to do. So, you know, for most people, dealing with scarcity timers, dealing with scarcity technology, uh, thinking through the entire campaign in terms of scarcity is a really difficult thing to do. Now, I do agree with you, though. Like, I agree that most people out there who sell products are honest, that they don't attempt to scam people. They don't try to just to make a quick buck. Some do, of course, but most are good people that just don't understand how to do it. Now, you mentioned like several times that scarcity works and you and I are in complete agreement about that, too. But the question is, why? Why does scarcity work? Yeah, so I've collected a lot of research on on studies that have been done, but I truly believe that it is hardwired into uh, into our thinking process. Um, so even when we know that urgency and scarcity is being used, even when we know, ah, okay, there's a deadline, I understand why they're doing that, it still is, is a powerful, powerful motivator to get us to act. And there's a so I used to I used to work in direct sales, like face to face sales, where you would try to convince someone to buy something and you would either get a sale, close the prospect, or you would get a rejection. And so one of the one of the trademark sayings in the direct face-to-face selling business is the delay of the sale is the death of the sale. In other words, if you're if I'm if I'm sitting in your office and we're talking about investing in a real estate deal and I'm trying to convince you to do it, you say, "Man, Jack, this sounds great. I want to go and talk to my business partner, talk to my wife. I need a week to think about it." The chances of you actually pulling the trigger go down tremendously, especially in certain selling situations, and and that's certainly true online. So when you say, hey, here's our deal. Here's what we're offering. Here's the value that, I, that that you get when you pay me what I'm asking. But by the way, you can come back and get it anytime that you want. Where's the compelling trigger to get someone to actually do it now? Why would they do it now? Now, some people are so... It, it, resonate so much with your message, your your solution solves such a painful problem for them that they're going to act now. And those are the people that, um, so I separate everyone who comes to your website into three categories. So there's the people who, you had me at hello. So as soon as they see your solution, like, oh my gosh, like they just skip right down to the bottom, click the buy button and they're in. Then there's the group of people that no matter what you say or what you do, for right now, it's not for them. They're just you're just not interested. But then there's everyone else. And this is where you can increase your conversions. There's everyone else who is interested, but for whatever reason, they're just not pulling the trigger right now. And, and a lot of times it just comes down to human nature procrastination. So first and foremost, just to bring us back to why does it work? First and foremost, I would say the number one reason why scarcity and deadlines work is because it forces a decision. It's saying you're either in or you're out, and here's the deadline. It forces people to make up their mind rather than procrastinating because making a decision is is challenging. A lot of people will delay making a decision because that's just their natural set point. And so by forcing them to make a decision, you're going to increase your sales, period. But the other, there, there's other things involved. So there are some really, really interesting studies, and I don't know if we have time to go into all of them, but there's some, been some really interesting studies that people have done out, way outside of the uh, the marketing world that just indicate that people value 
um, when something's being taken away from them, that pain of loss is much stronger than the desire to gain something. So let me give you a real life example. So just one study that, that I really like is that a group of students, let's say it's, I don't know exactly how many it was, but let's say it was 500 students are in this big auditorium. And imagine that the auditorium has a left side and a right side, but they're all in this auditorium. So one side of the auditorium, the instructor hands out these coffee mugs and says, okay, we're giving you these coffee mugs all of you. So the entire left side of the auditorium is given a coffee mug. They're yours. Enjoy them. You can do whatever you want with them. But before you leave, we want to ask you a question. How much would you have to be paid in order for you to trade that coffee mug? How much would I have to pay you in order to give up that coffee mug that now is yours? Write that number down. And so then the other half of the room, they said, now look, you see that the coffee mug over there, you don't have a coffee mug. How much would you pay to get a coffee mug? And so what was really fascinating is that the people who had the coffee mug valued it twice as much as the people who didn't have a coffee mug. In other words, once you have it, there's a there's a psychological effect called the endowment effect, which means that as soon as you feel like you have something that's being taken away, you put a much higher value on it. So how does that impact what we're talking about here? Well, when you're in my funnel and I'm showing you that, hey, right now there's these extra bonuses, there's a nice discount, and there's extra special sweeteners to the deal, this is yours right now. You can grab it. But tonight at midnight, this goes away. So now you have something or at least you, if I write my copy correctly, you feel like you have this opportunity, but the opportunity is going to be taken away. Well, now you automatically value that opportunity more. So now the deadline is forcing you to make a decision. And the fact that something is being taken away, you put a higher value on it. So those are two of the main reasons why uh, why scarcity and urgency works. But I just want to say that I know that it works because we've heard from just thousands of our own clients who tell us how much it's improved their results. And so without being a, a better copywriter, without uh, completely changing you know, your funnel, it's not like you have to go from a sales page to a webinar. Like You can use whatever type of funnel you want, but by using urgency and scarcity in the right way, you're going to see a bump in your conversion. Some people have a bump of, say, 40%. Some people have 2x or 3x. It's really all over the map, but you are going to see a bump. You know, in my experience, what I found is that procrastination is is truly the the biggest enemy uh, for us marketers because like I ran this promotion for a traffic deal where I gave a really sweet price on our on our clicks and I'm talking like forty percent off which is significant and um, so if we had let's just say ten people take on us on the offer which lasted for three days we had six of those ten okay take us on that offer two hours before the deadline. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they delayed until the very last second, until the very last minute to act. And it's it blew my mind. That was the first time, you know, that I learned that scarcity is the absolute most critical element. Besides, of course, a no-brainer offer, right? But, I mean, right. it, it is so critical to having a successful promotion. Yeah, so I, I want to I bring up two things. So one is that that window of time, so you said two hours, um, I, I call the last 12 hours before a deadline the perfect persuasion window. Because in terms of your revenue per per click, your revenue per visitor, your revenue per email open, whatever stats you want to measure, that's going to be your, uh, that's going to be where the numbers are the, are the highest. Okay, that's the true sweet spot. And we've seen this with uh, product launches as well, where when you've got that anticipation, but that you can't get it yet, you open the doors and you get a, a great surge of sales, things slow down as you're going through the, the product launch life cycle. But then the real fun happens right before you close it down because there's all the people that have been watching, interested, participating, and they're fascinated and, and they love your deal, but it, it takes that deadline to get them off the fence. And so that's where you get a real big surge of sales. Um, I, we've seen this time and time again. I've seen it documented on other people's blogs who are really not talking about us at all. They're not talking about our software. They're just documenting how their launch went. And they they show time and time again that the last day is bigger than the, the first day. Uh, but the other thing that you mentioned that I want to uh, underscore is that you have to have a really killer promotion. In other words, a deadline and scarcity is not going to revive uh, a, a product that has no interest in the market. It's not it's not resonating with the market. But if you've got something going, if, if you have something that's working, if you have an offer that's working, 
adding scarcity and adding urgency, like I said before, is going to give you a bump. All right. So let me take us into a different direction. So until now, we, we spoke about controlling the scarcity, inflicting the scarcity, and you know, product launches. Now, how about affiliate marketing? You're no stranger to the concept, of course. You've you've promoted things that is an affiliate, and think you've you've done really well in the software space. What about the people uh, that are promoting programs and offers they don't necessarily control? How can they inflict scarcity on those? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So it certainly is easier to control your funnel if, if you've got, if it's your offer. But I have sold as an affiliate um, and I've also worked with a lot of affiliates um, who are promoting our stuff. And so I've, I've been on both sides of that. And what I would tell you is two things. So uh, I learned a long time ago, I forget whose course it was, but it was many, many, many years ago. Um, I, took a, I took a course on affiliate marketing from someone who has some really, really good results. And one of my big takeaways from that training is that Especially if you've made some sales, you can approach the the vendor, the person who controls the offering. You can say, hey, look, I've got an idea. I'm really excited about promoting your product. I've made some sales, but I think I could drive even more sales if you would help me set up a, a special landing page or a special offer. You know, Here's what I've got in mind. And so you can work. A lot of times you can contact a vendor and you can come up with some sort of promotional deal. I do it. I do it for my affiliates all the time. If I if I believe that there's a, a, a possibility that they can send some good clients our way. So number one, I would say you can you can reach out to to the vendor. Now they're not always going to agree or they're not always going to respond. But you know, worst that they can say is is no. And so it doesn't cost you anything to try to reach out to them and at least approach them and see. And some vendors will even do this even if you haven't made any sales yet. It really just depends on the situation and, and just how good you are at convincing them. But I would just reach out to the vendor and see if they'd be willing to set something up. And so if you can do that, then you might be able to set up a special discount or add in a special bonus, put together some sort of special package and put a special landing page either on your site or on their site. And then that way you can control that offer. The other thing is that um, I know that some people will set up what are called iframes, where uh, if you're allowed to, if the terms of, of the of, of the affiliate arrangement allow you to, then you could iframe the page. And by iframing the page, now you've got control over what goes kind of goes on the page. And so, for example, one of the things that you could do is that you could put a floating bar, like using our technology, you could put a floating bar across the bottom or the top of that um, of that offer and have the countdown timer on that page. So I would feel more comfortable as an affiliate doing that if there was a way to iframe a page where that particular page was, was a special deal. In other words, if they go to the vendor's main website, they're going to see, okay, that truly was a, a special deal. Um, so those are those are some ideas that you that you could use as an affiliate, or you can at least try. Oh yeah, those are some great ideas. Now you know we have to keep in mind that our listeners are probably not software savvy. So uh, I'd love for us to take a step back and for you to explain exactly what an iframe sure. is. I don't want anyone you know leaving this call confused. Yeah, sure. Okay, so. I'll explain what an iframe is, but before I do, um, th- I just want to explain. This is one of the one of the easiest things that you can do online, and so that doesn't mean that if you're uh, sort of allergic to technology, you don't want to get your hands in, in, in any of the code. It doesn't mean that you should go and try to learn this, but my point is, is that you could go to Fiverr and for five, ten, fifteen bucks, you could have you could say, "Look, I want to have this page iframed. Here's what I want my URL to be on my website." So basically, what an iframe is is that it's taking someone else's page and putting it on your URL by creating a frame, if you think of it as as an invisible window. So they're on your page, and your page is really just serving as an invisible window pane that allows the other person's website to show. And so because it's completely invisible, no one's really going to be able to see it. So the the neat thing about it is that because it's on your domain, so if your domain is, I'll just use my website. So if it's if it's Jack, so if I was doing this and so I've got jackborn.com. And so if, if I created a page like jackborn.com forward slash super offer, I could have uh, someone else's URL showing underneath it the actual page i could have their page all so i don't have to create any any design or anything my url is just an invisible window pane that shows theirs behind it so it looks like their page is my my page is their page is that is that clear 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we used iframes a long time ago. I think it was five or six years ago and I was working with Jason Benoit, the founder of Quality Click Control. We used iframes to really boost our earnings with CPA offers. And it's a pretty neat technique. And and guys, I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. If you go to Upwork.com or Fiverr.com and you just uh, search for a keyword iframe, you'll find people who can do that for you for less, like Jack said, less than 20 bucks. It's really, it's just five minutes of actual work for somebody who understands code. So, but what it, what it helps you do is it helps you create genuine scarcity for your offers. You can install timers on pages you don't necessarily control. And by doing so, you will increase your conversions. And the difference can be staggering. I mean, we, we're talking about, you know, put a potential doubling your sales. I mean, that's massive. That's massive. And you should invest the time to investigate how you do that. And if you don't want to do the iframe option, try the first approach Jack suggested, which is, you know, approach the vendor and try to negotiate a deal. And, you know, of course, you'll have to come across as somebody who's serious because vendor will not invest their time and effort into setting up a custom deal for somebody who can't produce some sales for them. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, Jack, I think we're pretty much done. The only thing we have not dis- discussed yet is a deadline funnel. So not sure if, if uh, my listeners know or not, but you've created pretty much the best deadline or slash scarcity software, countdown timer software out there right now. I mean, it is getting so much praise by every single you know guru out there, like Perry Marshall raves about it. So can you walk us through how Deadline Funnel is different from all the other scarcity software out there. Sure. So so the way that it came to be was that many years ago, I knew the power of urgency and scarcity, but I, I didn't want to take a shortcut. I didn't want to just put a timer on a page. What I wanted, first and foremost, was I wanted an ability to put countdown timers on multiple pages. A lot of a lot of my funnels have multiple pages. There's the you know, the thank you page, the sales page, the some video pages, the order page. So I thought it, it kind of would be more powerful. I think it'd be more powerful if we could have the countdown timers at, le- at least on multiple pages, if not all of them, at least several of those pages so that we could remind people, hey, this deal is ending. But the other thing is that something that I use in all of my marketing are follow-up emails. And so I wanted to have the ability to set it up where, number one, I could I could put details in, in the person's email, even though even though the deadline would be set to people as they come through. So someone who comes in on Monday, their deadline is different than the person who comes in on Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera. Everyone gets their own specific deadline. But I wanted to have their actual deadline date and time in the email somehow. And there wasn't anything around to do that. And then the the third thing that I wanted was the ability, if someone was already on my list, to use things like a trigger, like if, if they got a tag applied to them or if they clicked a link or visited a sales page or they got moved into a sequence, whatever I wanted, I wanted that to be able to start the tracking so that I could send out a, a sequence of emails so that no matter when they clicked, even if they didn't cl- open the first email the day that it was sent out and do what I wanted them to do, even if they waited until the last day to start interacting with uh, with the promotion, I wanted the emails and the pages and the countdown timers to be all synchronized. And that just didn't exist. I looked everywhere, it didn't exist. And so I thought, okay, well, I've got coding chops. I'll, I'll go ahead and create this. And so I initially created it for myself, but then realized other people might have this need too. And so that's how Deadline Funnel was born. And from there, we've innovated more and more and more. And so um, the the core three things that I originally needed were the foundation, but then we realized the importance of things like being able to have accurate countdown timers for people on different devices because over half of emails are being read on mobile devices. And so you want to make sure that if someone is reading your last email at the coffee shop and they're on a totally different Wi-Fi network, and this is the first time that they're reading your emails on their iPhone, when they click through and your email says today's the last day, you want to make sure that your countdown timer reflects that. It does doesn't reset. So how do you track them from laptop to desktop to iPhone? So these are the things that we have, uh, we, we've figured out and our software also puts the countdown timers in the emails. But the real core of it, I think I got off track. I want to bring it back to the core reason why Deadline Funnel is, is loved by so many marketers. Number one, it just flat out increases their conversions. But the way it does it is by automating deadlines in people's uh, evergreen funnels in a way that is 100% authentic. Now, if anyone out there is thinking, okay, well, Jack, how can it be automated? How can every person coming through get assigned their own deadline and, and it be authentic? 
How can that be? That's that you're you know, it's contradictory, but it's not because I truly believe, and I want everyone to believe, that if your marketing says a deadline ends on a certain date and time, and your technology of your funnel and the systems that you're using enforces that, then you're not lying. They can't go get that deal. So automation is smart. We use marketing automation in as many aspects of our business as we can, from our emails to our sales pages to our webinars. I mean, you use marketing automation anytime that you can. The key thing is that you want to make sure that when your emails and your sales pages and your videos say, tonight's the deadline, that's got to be the deadline or else you're really shooting yourself in the foot for, uh, you're, you're, you're really throwing away your integrity and your ability to, uh, to make the second and third sale. So anyways, that's what our software does is it provides automated, authentic evergreen urgency so that you can set up automated evergreen funnels, get the maximum amount of conversion that you can, no matter what, how your funnel is designed and be able to sleep well at night, knowing that your systems are, are, are telling the truth. Well, the other thing I love about your software is the fact that you can integrate it with everything. Because like in my business, I use like uh, 17 or 20 different programs and services. And in between those, it's really hard to create synchronicity. So what your, what your software is able to do, Deadline Funnel, it can connect between, say, Aweber and ClickFunnels and this and that. So you kind of create this whole Right, this feeling of wholeness across all your pages, all your emails, all your funnels, all your videos, and everything else. So I, I really appreciate that about it. So guys, if you'd like to check out Deadline Funnel, which is the software that creates evergreen scarcity, genuine evergreen scarcity for each one of your visitors, then go ahead to DeadlineFunnel.com and sign up for a free trial. Right, so not only it's in the, a really awesome software, but it's also you're, you can use it for free for a while. So go ahead, sign up, grab a free account, and from what I'm hearing, although I did not have the pleasure, you know, to actually test this out, but from what I'm hearing, Jack has an incredible, incredible support. Like sometimes he would even get with you on the phone about the technical issue because he really cares about the product again so i hear so if you're somebody who struggles with technology don't worry you know jack's support team will assist you that actually you know you have my word yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so i want to i want to talk to that for just a second so there, there's a lot of software companies out there that frankly are are bigger than, than we are, but they, they, they have, it really drives me bananas because I use other software too. It drives me bananas when someone has the live chat and it's in the middle of, of what we consider the, the U S work day. Right. Um, so if, and then you type into the chat and it says, Hey, no one's available. We'll, we'll, we'll reply back in a bit. Like we're, we're responding Monday through Friday, I'd say 6 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern time. So during that window, you're chatting with with members of my team, oftentimes uh, me, I'll, I'll chime in. And we also do free onboarding calls. And so when you sign up, the first thing that you see is a message from me saying, hey, if you'd like to set up a free onboarding call, um, go ahead and, and click the link to, to add it to your to your calendar. And we'll get on the phone with you and just really try to answer any questions that you have and make sure that you get it set up. Um, there's not too many companies that, that do that, but we really want to make sure that we can answer whatever questions that you have. And, and because we believe that if we help you get it up and running, that you're going to be a client for a really long time. And so we invest that extra time and energy to really provide that over-the-top support. There you have it, folks. So go to DeadlineFunnel.com to learn more. So, Jack, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for listening to The Liz Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.